Hey guys, my guys, Vlad here with AVT Astro. And today we are talking about the JSkyer 9600AZ telescope. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com. And of course, this YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes more accessories in that account. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Alrighty guys, so this subject of entry-level refractors is kind of dear, dear to my heart. My very first telescope, you know, way back when, about 25 years ago, was a 60 millimeter Tasco. So this is a 90 millimeter, a little bit larger. 90 millimeter, uh, you know, we're talking about the objective size here. So basically how big the front lens is on that. Uh, that translates to 3.4 inches. You know, if you like inches better. Uh, it does come with the uh, uh, inch a quarter focuser um finder scope with this guy that's included is a, a 30 millimeter finder scope so a pretty good size for this size telescope it includes three eyepieces which are these guys right here that you use to change the magnification of the telescope it comes with a 25 millimeter a 10 millimeter and a 5 millimeter and I'm listing the magnifications right now of you know what that gets you. It also includes a three inch, uh, 3X Barlow, uh, which uh, we'll kind of talk about why you probably really don't really even need that with this telescope a little bit later on. Alrighty guys, and enough of me yapping here in the garage. So let's get outside and see how this thing performs uh, during the daytime for terrestrial type of viewing. And at night, uh, looking at the moon, and I'll talk about you know viewing some other objects with it as well. Alrighty guys, and here's the scope set up in my backyard, looking at the nearby island uh, in uh, Silver Lake out there. Um, as you can see, you know, pretty nice detail. Uh, this is using the 25 millimeter eyepiece. And here's a comparison shot taken with my wife's uh, Samsung Galaxy S23 at 30x. As you can see, there's quite a bit more detail taken through the telescope, although there is a narrower field of view. Now, while we're kind of taking a look at the scope here, um, I did just want to point out that I uh, kind of mentioned uh, the magnification, why you might not need the 3x Barlow. Uh, this then, you know, realistically, uh, with the 5mm gives you 120x, which is plenty of power. That's about the max that, you know, you, you could expect to see a decent image of uh, through any really achromatic 90mm uh, telescope. So now we are starting to take a look at the moon. Uh, as you can see, just right through the eyepiece. I'm just holding my phone up, you know, straight to the eyepiece. Again, it's still with the 25mm. Pretty nice detail in the craters and just a really a nice view. All right, and with the magic of YouTube, we're back inside, right? All right, anyhow, guys, so what do I think about the scope overall? You know, kind of conclude it. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm gonna tell you guys my honest opinion, just mechanically operating this thing wise, you know, considering, again, this is an entry-level telescope. These retail for about 270 bucks. I just checked on Amazon, you know, at the publishing of this video. Uh, focuser on this thing is very serviceable. I had no, really no issues with the focuser. Overall, all the hardware, you know, for the price point of this telescope, uh, you know, works really well. The mount, uh, that was kind of my only gripe out of the box with this thing. It was a little stiff. So there is a nut here that you kind of, uh, I at least on my sample, I had to loosen to, you know, get this axis to turn easier. Um, th this, you know, this kind of, again, adjusts, you know, how tight this axis is. Um, you know, kind of going up and down. On my particular sample, this, like even with this thing all the way loose, uh, this was kind of still tight. So what I did is I just put a screwdriver and a flathead screwdriver, kind of pry that apart a little bit more and now it moves a lot smoother. So I really enjoy kind of like all the hardware aspects of the scope again at this price range very much. All right, now kind of moving on to the optics. Uh, finder scope, I really didn't have any issues with using this thing, you know, as far as locating, you know, stuff the way that I normally locate it. I personally prefer red dot finders. I'm gonna have a link to a red dot, like it's really inexpensive Spencer Red Dot Finder that I use in a lot of my scopes. Uh, it'd be very easy to attach that to this telescope. Uh, so, you know, I, I personally prefer that. Yeah, I suggest really to switch it out to that. Uh, for terrestrial use, you know, if you're looking to use it for birding or looking at nature, or, you know, whatever you want to look at, this diagonal, uh, the 45 degree will is fine. For astronomy use, uh, upgrading to a 90 degree. The diagonal is going to be a lot more beneficial. First of all, it's easier on your neck. Second of all, optical performance is going to be better. And again, I'll have a link to one in the description as well. Uh, Eyepieces wise uh, that, that this thing comes with, again, these are kind of cool because you can attach the camera adapter, you know, directly to them. 
And uh, it actually attaches really securely. I actually enjoy using this. These, you know, they are entry level light pieces. They're not like, you know, the best that you could get or anything like that. So again, I'll kind of have a link uh, to, you know, better eye pieces if you wanted to upgrade these. But these are definitely good enough to get you started and to get some nice views uh, out of it as well. Alrighty guys, and closing off on the optical performance of the scope, you know what I think about that and kind of just kind of bring the video to a conclusion, right? Um, overall, uh, pretty nice scope for, you know, looking at the larger uh, open star clusters, nebulas, the brighter nebula, especially since stuff like the Orion Nebula. Like I distinctly remember looking at that uh, through this thing. Uh, M27, which is actually a smaller nebula under a dark sky, uh, my dark sky site property. I mean, that, even that was a real treat. So you could definitely get some pretty, you know, good views of uh, deep sky objects with this thing. Uh, the moon, guys, in any telescope is going to be a treat, especially if you're for, it's your first time looking at the moon through a telescope. It'll be a treat. I mean, this is no exception. So that's going to be very nice. Stuff like double stars, especially the ones that are white, more widely separated, they're more you know colorful, are going to be a treat as well. Uh, looking at the planets, you know this is kind of like one thing that this is going to be you know not as strong of a performer at. Just, you know, due, due to the nature of it just being in an achromatic telescope, kind of smaller aperture, um, you will still be able to see like the bands of Jupiter on it with the, the five millimeter eyepiece that it comes with. Uh, Saturn, guys, it's going to be a treat. Anytime you look at Saturn, especially for your first time through a telescope and you see the rings, you know, around it, I could guarantee your socks are going to be blown off and that will be a treat. Alrighty, guys, so hopefully this was informative. If you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave them in the thumb below. If you're not subscribed, again, please do consider subscribing. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.